I'm Alex Nicolau, I'm the chair of the CS department, and I'd like to welcome you to Irvine and to UCI. Um, I'm sorry I can't really say anything great about the weather this morning, but uh, I can assure you that by noon it will be sunny and nice. And the weather is very civilized in Irvine, uh, in the sense that when it does rain, it often rains at night. And during the morning, you know, you may get some fog like today, but by, by noon at the very latest, it clears up and you get a nice, beautiful sky. And while that's presumably not why you want to go to grad school, <laughs> uh, it is an important feature because, you know, graduate school is hard work and it's very demanding and it's probably different and at a different level than, than anything you've done before. Uh, that is, you know, as undergrads, you presumably all had great grades and you're doing well, because otherwise you wouldn't be here today. But, uh, and you all want to learn and all, you all want to do research. But research is really different and requires a different kind of commitment and, and effort. At the same time, it's extraordinarily rewarding. And I think this is probably the best investment you can make in your life because you know it will substantially improve not just your ability to make money but your quality of life in ways that you can't even imagine so I don't have time to, to go more into that but you know as part of that quality of life you know so graduate school can be very challenging and so quality of life though outside of graduate school is also important because there will be times when the research is not going well or what have you and things will be depressing and it helps to have blue skies when you get, after you've worked for a night hard on a project and it's not quite getting where you want you at least come out and you see the sun especially in the winter it makes a smile uh, whereas many places don't have that luxury also you know Irvine of course is ex you know it's extremely safe, crime-free, uh, one of the best places in the world to live in. And so, um, you know, that's always a plus. All right, let me tell you something a little bit about the department. I don't know how much uh, Dean uh, Marius told you, but uh, UCI is a new dynamic campus. What that means is that we're we were growing by leaps and bounds to get here, and we will be growing for the foreseeable future, both in terms of students, quality, what have you. Um, we're, so we're hiring lots of people. There's a lot of money being invested. There's a new building in the parking lot uh, next door that's going to come up in the next couple of years. So there's a lot of expansion, a lot of opportunity. What that means to you as graduate students is that if you don't like your current advisor, there will be more coming. <laughs> and you know, there's plenty, and it's already a fairly large department. Uh, so the department and the university, in fact, was founded in uh, 68. All this area, Orange County, was an orange plantation, pretty much, uh, up to that point. And there was a big chunk of land donated to the university and the, to UC, and uh, UCI was founded on that land. As a result, we still have a lot of land for expansion. Um, we survived since then till, till 2002 as an independent department, somewhat of an anomaly, but we had grown too big to be just a department. And eventually, with the addition of a statistics department, which is very useful nowadays because of the machine learning connection, uh, and uh, with informatics becoming a department in its own right, we have become a school in 2002, which again means more resources and what have you. Um, the program is large, both at the undergraduate level and at the graduate level. The reason why I'm mentioning for you the, the undergraduate level is simply there's lots of, you know, if you are TAing, there's lots of opportunity to TA to be a teaching assistant in a course that you actually know something about or care about more than others, because we have a very wide breadth of offerings, unusual, I think, even by, by most large university standards. Um, we have, you know, joint, in addition to the, all the majors offered in the school, we have joint programs with engineering. There's a lot of collaboration 
but not just with those two. With those, we have happened to have joint programs, but we have collaborations from med research collaborations from medical school to education. So it's very broad, very open. You know, this is also part of being in California. People are by and large nicer. They talk to each other. They, they, they say have a good day, and you know they, they make friends across campus and across uni neighboring universities. So there's lots of collaborations going on. Uh, we have a very large, I think, graduate program, both uh, MS and PhD degrees, with again a wide variety of areas, and I'm not really listing all of them. But uh, and there's a networked systems group, which is a separate program with a somewhat different twist across engineering and CS. And you know, it's very easy to, to depending on interest, to, to be part of that or any other program. We have roughly 210. Those numbers change rapidly, right? Computer science is exploding all over the country and uh, here, too. And so we, we're getting you know, a lot of students. We have something like 2,400 2, undergrads just in the department. We're the biggest, of course, department in the school by far. I mean, the other two put together are not nearly, you know, have like, I don't know, 200 students, undergrad. Uh, the PhD level, we have 210 or so PhD students. We have a very healthy MS program. Uh, of course, you know, if you go to a PhD and you don't have a master's, you can pick up the master's on the way. It's kind of a free gift. Uh, so we have rather good faculty. We have some, uh, one member of the National Academy of Engineering. We have a lot of other awards and accolades and whatnot, uh, and too many to, to count uh, awards of various sorts, like best papers, best of time, various prizes. Um, pretty large department, uh, you know, 42 faculty with a fairly quite healthy uh, funding situation. Well, what that means to you is that chances are you will not have to TA for, even though you know, we're one of the relatively few universities that guarantee you support as long as you're in good standing. So if your advisor doesn't have funding, or you know, has funding now, but two years uh, down the road, the grant ends, and he doesn't get another, he or she doesn't get another one, uh, doesn't mean that you're out of luck and then you have to go and work at uh, Burger King for, for, you know, to finish your PhD. It means simply that the university will support you, which is very nice and doesn't always happen. Uh, so as long, and that's not limited in time, as long as you're in good standing. If you're not in good standing, of course, you're on your way out, and then you're on your way out. But most, you know, most students who are, want to do a PhD are motivated enough, and are, you know, when you go to graduate school, you pretty much know you want to be in graduate school. You pretty much know you're qualified to go to graduate school. So you know, most people don't drop out. Uh, so uh, let me, I, don't, I certainly don't have time to go through, through everything we do. I wouldn't have had time even if I had my 15 minutes, but I'm trying to keep this uh, short. So I'm going to just very quickly flash a few slides, and you guys can, can you know, some of the, those things will be covered in detail by people who will give you presentations. Others may be covered by people you meet with. If, you're interested in something that you see flashing here, and you don't meet with anybody on that topic, but you'd like to, contact Samir, and he'll set up something in the afternoon. Um, but basically, you know, we have big project and uh, big data, which Chen will probably talk a lot more about. Uh, we have a lot of work in embedded systems, which is a very broad area, and you know, we happen to have the center joint with engineering center of our embedded systems that's the oldest and arguably the best such center in the in the world. Uh, we have a very, very strong machine learning and data mining group. Samir will probably tell you way more about that than you ever wanted to know. Um, they're doing a lot of great work and they're highly respected and you know highly impactful. Um, there's work on genomics and bioinformatics led by, by Pierre Baldi, who's not here, 
but that's also very exciting. It's joint collaborating with several there's a biology department, uh, chemistry department, medicine, school of medicine, um, all sorts of exciting stuff. I'm sorry I have to rush through this so fast, but you know. Uh, there's work on security and uh, secure software and dynamic compiling. Mike Franz pretty much pioneered this concept uh, uh, and uh, biologically inspired defenses of, you know, Reorder, reorganizing the code and introducing spurious code to, to uh, you know, combat threats. There's another group that's doing very strong work in security, which of course is hot uh, today from anything like, you know, protecting your DNA information while still being able to do medical tests and whatnot to, to various, uh, you know, pri privacy, uh, remote attestation, all sorts of uh, interesting stuff. There's uh, some of our newer faculty are doing very exciting work on secure operating systems and data center scale uh, um, operating systems. Um, there's also a lot of work uh, on, on mobile system research and operate, you know, real-time operating systems um, done by, by Ardalan, uh, another new faculty. Um, and we, of course, have word because it's also a hot, big area on high performance and parallel com computing, especially nowadays on power management and dealing with fault tolerance. Tur turns out that all the speed and all the massive data center scale computers increase the probability of faults and you wind up having lots of problems that traditional fault tolerance techniques don't quite cover. And there, it's a fairly hot area in that respect. Um, okay, let me stop here. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them now or later. Um, if not, Chen needs to give his talk. And we both have to go. <laughs> Thank you.